I'd like to welcome everybody to um, this session. My name is Debbie Roscoe, and I'm one of the National Disability Coordination Officers. And I welcome you to this session, uh, large scale implementation of same language subtitles, a case study with our presenter, Dr. Stuart Dinmore from the University of South Australia. This session is being live captioned. Thank you, Mikan. To activate the captions, click the CC button in the toolbar that's located either on the top or the bottom of your screen. We also have captions available via the browser, which uh, David is putting in the chat box. So what we're going to do is start this session with a presentation from uh, Dr. Stuart Dinmore, and then we'll wrap up with a 10 minute Q&A. So during this session, uh, it is being recorded. We ask you to please turn off your camera and microphone and to also use the Q&A function to pose questions. So uh, please chat amongst yourself, but we'll be monitoring the Q&A function so we can ask those questions later in the presentation. Uh, we'll put all this information in the chat box so you don't need to remember it all. And I'm gonna hand it straight over to Stuart. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Debbie. And uh, thanks for that welcome. And hi to everybody out there. Thank you very much for coming along. I hope you are comfortable. Um, I know that these uh, online sessions can be a little draining to look at the screen. So um, I hope you've got yourself a cup of tea and that you've uh, really enjoyed your time so far. Uh, so my name's Stuart Dinmore. I'm an academic developer with the University of South Australia. Uh, and I work in the teaching innovation unit. So we work as a, as a unit across the university, uh, working with, uh, with just the teachers, not, not with the students, which is, which is interesting. Uh, so what I want to talk to you today is about a project we've been running for a number of years uh, about same language subtitles. Uh, I note from the keynote today that Cheryl nearly stole my thunder uh, talking about captions. Uh, so she bri <laughs> briefly uh, went over a couple of the things I'm going to talk about today, but hopefully we can talk about some of those things in a little more depth. But she was absolutely right in what she's saying. Um, uh, same language subtitles really do represent a... Uh, as the universality of, of UDL or universal design. Uh, and I hope we can talk a little bit more about that today. So as we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm speaking to you from, and that's the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains. And I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which you today are living, learning and working. So this session, I'll just move that up so I can see what's happening. Okay, this is a slide you've seen so far, and I'm sure you're gonna be very familiar with this slide. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through this today. This is some pretty basic stuff. Uh, so session etiquette, um, obviously you're all familiar with, uh, with this online setting. So I won't harp on about this too much. We've all been through this slide, but it's, it's my duty to show you this slide as part of the session. Uh, one thing I will say about the Q&A is I hope we can have a little good chat at the end. Uh, I think that's where the most value when these sessions come. But please feel free to post your questions in the, in the chat at any time during the session uh, and we'll get to them at the end. Uh, thank you very much. So yeah, feel free to post things at any time. So what we're going to be covering today is talking a little bit about multimedia and higher education, higher ed in higher ed. Uh, we'll talk about multimedia and accessibility putting the universal in new deal. Uh, we'll cover some of the benefits of same language subtitles. We shall did touch on some of those, but we'll expand on that a bit more. Uh, and I'll give you some, uh, some data from a student survey that we carried out last year through a large number of online students, which um, showed some really interesting results around these things. Uh, then if we have time, I'll briefly touch on a, um, on a case study from the university, uh, UniSA Online, which is a wholly online uh, uh, section of our university. So it's a wholly 100% online asynchronous delivery, which currently has about 6,000, 6 or 7,000 students. So it's a huge part of our university. Uh, part of that case study is we have achieved same language subtitles uh, with 100% accuracy on 100% of the pieces of uh, media in that, in that uh, unit. So uh, I'll talk about the way that we approach that. And then at the end, uh, we'll talk about some things to consider if you're thinking about doing something like that yourself. So why? Why are producing multimedia content for your students? Um, 
there are a range of reasons, and I could speak probably a couple of days about the range of reasons for that, but in the context of what we're talking about here, uh, flexibility is, is the key part for, of why it's been such an explosion in the last 10 to 15 years of multimedia content being produced by universities. Uh, some of the reasons, and we, we hear from our students, we hear from our staff, is, is self-paced learning, uh, particularly in asynchronous environments. Students can watch videos whenever they like. They can watch them in the bath, they can watch them on the bus, they can slow them down, they can speed them up, they can repeat them. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with the concept of chipmunking where students will speed up a video and, uh, and obviously the, the voice of the presenter speeds up like a chipmunk. Uh, so it really lends a huge amount of flexibility to, to all students. This obviously feeds into time management. Uh, we know a lot of our students today rarely, and particularly at my institution, they rarely are just students. They have a range of other responsibilities. And so time management for the students is, is particularly important to them. And the flexibility afforded by multimedia just fits in with the, with this, you know, the student profile as we know it. But most importantly, and what we're talking about today is equitable access to this content. Uh, and subtitles really remove barriers to learning for a lot of students. Uh, it's, it's really a great example of what university design can be. Uh, with, as Cheryl mentioned, quite a small thing that can really change uh, that access uh, to the content. Uh, removes that barrier for learning. So we asked the students last year in the 100% in the online space, you're doing asynchronous videos, do you ever rewind or pause a video while watching? And you'll note that 97% of the students always usually or sometimes paused or re rewound a video. And this is an obviously a stark uh, difference between uh, a video, a multimedia presentation and a lecture. It really speaks to the flexibility of this kind of content for a range of student needs. And, uh, and obviously they are really using this. So we're talking 60, 66% of the students usually or always, two thirds of the students, usually or always pause or rewind a video while watching. So this speaks to that whole idea of the universality of, of content. So some of the advantages. It makes content accessible for deaf or hard of hearing people. We know from the data, about 3.6 million people in Australia have some form of hearing loss. It helps attainment or comprehension of an additional language. Uh, variously across the uh, higher education sector in Australia, there's upwards of 20% of our students are international students. And so this uh, attainment of comprehension of additional language is super important. Uh, it makes content accessible in sound sensitive environments. Uh, we know that uh, houses these days have multiple screens and people have multiple needs and, and uh, locations within that house and so it's really um it really allows people to consume that content in sound sensitive environments it's, it's a great idea uh increases the comprehension and spelling and pronunciation of discipline specific language so this is something we found really important to clean foods like in the science fields and the stem fields where in you know in the food like uh physiotherapy it uses a very specific form of language and so being inducted into that field and becoming part of that field is actually a large part of that is about learning the language and the spelling of those different types of language. And it becomes a really important part of your induction into that field and your knowledge of that field. And just it helps all students to be able to see that language in context. How is that language spoken? How does it sound? How is it spelled? And the same language subtitles can really help promote uh, promote that sort of learning among the students. Another thing that we've found can be really handy is that uh, the, the these um, subtitles or captions can be turned into transcripts. That's written pieces of text uh, that students can read. Uh, that can be also a different way for students to access the data. So these are kind of the main uh, advantages of SLS or same language subtitles. And I've put a link there to an article from uh, Morton and Gernsbacher, 
video captions better for everyone. So hopefully you can access that link. I'll send it out uh, as part of this presentation. And there is a huge amount of data in this um, in this uh, article that really speaks to all of these advantages. So if you want to dig a little bit deeper into some of the research that's going on behind the scenes, then um, you can find it all there. So just a couple more examples of the data. Uh, did you read subtitles while viewing the course? You see, again, a huge amount of students took advantage of the ability to read the courses, uh, to read the subtitles. And the, this number of students is, is much larger in students reporting some disabilities. Uh, uh, then, so you can see it's really universally used by students. This is a more interesting one. I think, did the subtitles increase your understanding of topics or concepts in the course? 57% uh, of the students said that, that it did, which is, I was hoping for it to be a little bit higher, but um, I think that's still a reasonable result when you're looking at over half the students uh, had their understanding of the concepts increased by having the subtitles. Actually, on reflection, I think that's quite a, a decent result. So you can see again, really universally helpful for a lot of students. How are we going for time? Yes, fun does. So here are some quotes uh, from that survey. We're not really going to have time to go through those, but you can just see at the top there. As a hearing impaired student, that finds subtitles essential for video viewing. And that's really what this is about in this context. Uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to come back and look at these and obviously we'll send out the data. So getting onto the case study in the moments we have left, uh, UniSAM lines 100% online academic unit with six to 7,000 students and they're all around Australia, uh, predominantly in South Australia, but we're on the Eastern Seaboard and we have students internationally. Uh, so one of the things that we did when we, we began this unit in about 2015 was we made a commitment right at the start that uh, we would offer 100% same language subtitles on online content. So we launched uh, a research project and how in the best way to do that. And I'll talk a bit about some of the results of that on the next slide. Um, so now the, the 6,000, 7,000 students are supported by 4,500 pieces of multimedia content. This is, in the most part, this is videos, spoken videos, voice over PowerPoints, animations, uh, one sort of mini uh, feature film, uh, interview, all this sort of things, and they all have same language subtitles. Uh, this is supported by a multimedia team. And crucially, we pay for an external provider to create subtitles. So this is where we get, in, get into um, uh, what some of the tips and some of the considerations that you might have if you would like to start to implement this in your, in your institution. So that's the case study. We made, that in, we made that commitment from the start. We got in on the ground floor with um, advising the designers of this uh, unit and it's been tremendously successful. So some things to consider if you want to implement this in your institution. Uh, and it's interesting that we have a transcriber with us today. And so you see there is always the need for human intervention uh, in, uh, in the auto transcription or transcription process. So we found through all our, um, through our research projects, but auto transcription is very good, but it's never 100% accurate. And this will require human intervention at some stage. We know that, and I'm sure many of you have experienced this, that uh, the, the auto transcription of audio has improved in the last 10 years, in incredibly improved. You know, 10 years ago, we would go into YouTube and, and try it just for our own amusement, but it was so terrible that it's really improved a lot since, uh, since Google bought YouTube, definitely improved. And we use uh, a content management system at UniSA, for example, is Panopto. And the, their auto transcription service is, is excellent. And it includes grammar. It'll do capitals and, and uh, commas and, and all these sorts of things. So it's actually fantastic. But it's never 
one of the things we found from the project with a high accuracy of auto transcription, the highest factor in that, the biggest factor is audio quality. Mm. And this means clear recording with no background disturbance. It's not requiring an expensive mic, it's more to do with mic placement. So this is about having your mic positioned from your mouth correctly so you don't get those plosive sounds around the P's and the S's. That is hugely important and does not require a really expensive microphone. If you have a really expensive microphone, sure, it's great, but it doesn't necessarily uh, mean anything. An expensive microphone poorly placed will still give you a bad result. Quiet background is also extremely important. Um, we noted in the, in the uh, research project that accent and speed of talking was way less of a factor than uh, this microphone, than the audio quality. So if you're going to start relying on auto transcriptions, um, I would highly recommend really concentrating and doing some training around uh, correct microphone use. Uh, what we've come to the conclusion of is that even high accuracy auto transcribed subtitles are better than nothing. So if you can't afford to get uh, human intervention uh, to afford that service, or high accuracy auto transcribed subtitles are better than nothing, and students will often adapt to those. Uh, and obviously, we, we go back to the previous uh, bullet point around uh, getting a great audio quality, and that will really help you in the regard. Mm. Stuart, it, it's Debbie here. So I, I just want to jump in while you're talking about the auto um, generated um, captioning. Um, sure. It's around that. Um, we, we have a question that's come in and it kind of flows on, on from that. And it's, it's mentioned that the academics need to manage their own subtitles. Um, and some disciplines are very much more challenging to get the word and terminology correct, particularly in the, in the sciences. Yeah. Um, and so they, they were saying, is, is it worth just having the auto-generated captions? Is it better than not doing anything in, in that space? And, and then we had someone mention that um, Microsoft Stream is, is quite good and um, they've had some great success with that um, because you can edit it and I think they said it's 97% correct. So right. would that be the one that you would suggest people um, to I'm, use? Or is that I'm not familiar with Microsoft Dream. Mm -hmm. uh, I've used YouTube, which is the Google one. Mm -hmm. I've used Panopto and I've used a little bit of Echo 360. I think they're all, I understand anecdotally, they're all pretty much on the par. Mm -hmm. Um, if I can talk about the experience of using YouTube and Panopto, and I, I imagine Microsoft Dream is the same. When you go in to edit your captions, uh, if, you, if you're talking about a 97% uh, accuracy, that's great. Mm -hmm. not going to be much work to do. But you can go in and you can select, you can, you can teach, teach it the words that you need to do. So... Uh, for example, when I do presentations, I'm on Ghana land uh, and I speak about being on Ghana land and in the auto transcription, it comes up as G-H-A-N-A, -A, where country in Africa. Uh, but I told Panopto, actually, what I mean when I say Ghana is Ghana, K-U-A-N-A. -A -A. Uh, and now it auto corrects to that. So it's about making a little bit of effort at the start and getting those keywords and the and, uh, and telling the uh, the machine learning, I guess, to um, this is what you mean by this in future. So there is some human intervention that's required there, but for those key terms, you can definitely do them. Uh, I haven't used Microsoft Dream, but I'll definitely look into that. Thank you. Okay, I am putting it out open for for questions. Those ones came in during your presentation, Stuart. So I, I jumped in with those, but is there any other questions that uh, we have have an expert here who's, that we can tap into their knowledge and expertise? I must say, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting your recording back, Stuart, and putting in a fast mode for the chipmunk. <laughs> I, never thought of, I never thought of doing <laughs> yeah. I mean, the opposite is true. We do have some lecturers who speak way too fast mm. 
and they get slowed down. And I don't, I don't know what we call that colloquially, but um, <laughs> they definitely slow that video down because some lecturers, you know, when they get on a, mm. on a um, it's interesting what Tamara has said about the uh, when you watch a TV show with mm. the closed captions. I read some, uh, I think it was on a conversation recently that um, incredibly high amount of people watch Netflix and other streaming services with uh, with the same language subtitles on. And mm -hmm. I certainly do that when I'm watching particularly American programs mm -hmm. uh, because I can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's when from the south you know they yeah i mean I, they tend to mumble and when <laughs> if you're looking at if you're looking at these really intense programs like succession for example you don't want to miss anything they've said mm, so definitely i think a lot of people are using uh, and i know my kids i've got three kids and they watch uh all of the streaming services they watch with same language subtitles on absolutely i think you need to direct them into the documentaries because the absorption as you said with your your research, uh, they remember a lot of things then um, if they're doing the, the captioning as well as the recording. Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. true. I mean, that, that article that I mentioned, uh, there is a section in there where there was an, a marked uh, improvement in students retaining information mm. when, uh, when they've used subtitles. So yeah, absolutely, that is the case. Yep. <laughs> Oh, Stuart, thank you very much for that. I'm going to start looking at winding up so we can get back into the um, okay, no into the lobby. But it's, it's a topic and, you know, and I think it's great that, you know, if you repeated anything that Cheryl said, I think that's great. It's all wonderful knowledge and it's great to have it um, re repeated, you know, a few ways and in, and in different formats. So I think it's just brilliant. Um, and it's certainly a topic I'd like to, um, would have liked to have longer. You did very well to make it so succinct in the 15 minutes that you're allocated. So well done, um, well done to you. And I'd like thank to thank everybody for coming along um, today. Um, I'd also encourage you to check out the poster presentations on the AdSet website under the UDL, um, a little banner up the top there as well. So thank you, um, Stuart. I really appreciate um, you know, your, your presentation and, and the sharing of the information as with um, everyone else that um, that has participated today. So thank you. And I wish you um, all the very best in, in the afternoon sessions that everyone's attending. And thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.